man is here to wake everybody up with his amazing energy. Uh, Matteo Cooley, everybody. Hi, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so, hi, everybody. This is a front-end track, and, well, yesterday we, speak, we spoke a lot about microservices. And, well, let me present you a new approach for building microservices architecture which is, I don't know, let's call it full stack through microservices. So why through? I think you all know through from Dominic Tarr and as a general approach of building applications, uh, which means that, okay, let's just try building services, just piping stuff one into each other, okay? That's the cool thing about Node and Streams, just, just pipe stuff. Uh, well, little bit of introduction, hi guys. Uh, and this came out, out of my experience. I'm an Internet of Things guy most of the time, also not developer, and whatever. This came out of, out of my experience, so anyway. Uh, well, where do we come from? And why, what's happening and why this, can, this might be sane or insane, I don't know. You decide. Uh, well, uh, how we distributed services from the beginning, okay? Well, in the beginning there was this RPC thing, which was really a thing back in the days, right? And well, the remote procedure call for everybody. And well, the first commercial system that popped out was kind of Sun and NFS. I don't know. I studied the stuff at school, uh, which uh, may, some of you maybe may experienced it. I've coded some of the stuff. Okay, so well, I don't know. It was not really a super pleasant experience, anyway. Uh, lots of stuff going on. And then things got really worse. I don't know how many of you work with Java RMI. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Things from the Sun stuff to Java RMI, things got really worse because Java RMI just pretended that a function was kind of local and Java RMI just pretended that objects were local and were remote instead, right? So I don't know, things were not really going well um, uh, in this camp. Uh, then we, I don't know, we came out and we, uh, some great work on Substack and we have Dnode and it was really great you can just pop out a server, an RPC server very easily. And you can, well, it's just always based on the request response pattern anyway, right? It's RPC, but still it's built on streams. You can run it in the browser. You can compose system in a very nice ways on it. It's based on a JSON message format, nice JSON stuff. Works in the browser. However, still data must be ready before calling the RPC, right? It's RPC. So, uh, I send some data input in and I get the, the result back. That's it. Um, we have no live feeds. Only in RPC, we don't have live feeds. Then we have REST, right? If we are not doing RPC, we are just using REST. Representational states transfer, okay? Um, I hope all of you know about REST at this time, at this point in time. Um, well, okay. How many of you have read the work from Rai Fielding? Okay. You guys are all my respect. <laughs> uh, most people doesn't really have studied REST the way it's supposed to work. We just say, okay, we have read some book about REST, whatever. Still, it's not, okay, most of the, what is called REST these days is not still not REST in a pure way of things. Um, to some extent, REST is mostly used as a nicer version of RPC. Okay, from our web apps, we just call it, okay, just issue a post request somewhere. Still, we have no live feeds, okay? How many of you use server sent events? Okay, guys, okay, some people. Uh, server sent events are really nice, still. It's a nicer way we can have live feeds on a, on a REST resource. Then we have WebSockets, okay? And WebSocket is not really REST is completely not REST, right? It's completely violating of all the HTTP and web patterns. And we have, we have frameworks for doing REST, like Happy and Restify and Express and all the kind of stuff. But then we have a completely a different set of frameworks for doing all the stuff that is uh, WebSocket and stream-based and all the kind of different stuff. These two words doesn't talk between each other. So what does Docker have any sense in all this thing? Okay, lots of thinking, talking about Docker stuff. Uh, I, let, I'm talking about today some Docker stuff too, which is not really related to Docker, the container system. Um, uh, let me cite 
Solomon, the Docker creator, whatever, CEO of the company. Um, okay, so all the RPC systems are built on, on the idea that uh, we call function locally. And instead, it's just a remote thing, okay? So let's is, instead, let's just think completely in a different way. If you are building a microservices architecture, we might want to have a microservices in our process on the client anywhere. Let's just think everything is connected like on the network. And let's pretend it's over the network even if it's not. Well, what, where does this went? In a library called Libchan, you should have, might have heard about it also, related to Libswarm, whatever. It's built in Go. It's, I don't know, there are going to be great stuff about this library from the Docker company, not telling anything of it. Uh, it's built on, on Speedy. I hope all of, you, all of you know about Speedy at this point in time. This is a very nice implementation of Speedy from uh, Fedor, which is speaking later, so anyway. Uh, very good stuff. It's built on Speedy, and it's like Go channels over the network. It's built on message pack, okay? So it's binary, fully binary. Anyway, all the transport is binary. You can send over messages, the kind of JavaScript objects, arrays, whatever. It uses the latest stuff of message pack, specification of message pack, which is not all compatible with all the library out there. Let's see that in a moment why this happened. And it's unidirectional. So I open a channel to you, to some of you. I open a channel to Michael. And <laughs> I'm sending messages. And the messages just flow from me to him, OK? So how can we build a system with that stuff? How is possible? How can I get the value back? So uh, well, first thing, you send a request. And well, no response, because it's just one way. Uh, OK, so okay, I can send a retard channel in. So I have a stream, and inside the stream, I send another stream. And that stream, for me, is, a read, is readable, OK? And for Michael, it will be writable, OK? And we can send not just one, 42, whatever. Doesn't care. It's not limited. You can send all the streams you want in, and they got on the other end as streams. How this works, because we use some, extent, some custom types for message pack that was introduced for in the top late, latest release of message, message pack. So it also supports binary streams. So if you read a file from the file system, you send it on the, on, inside the channel, and it gets there uh, as a stream. And when the well, back pressure and all, all the kind of stuff, it, it pops there. Nice one. Um, yeah. So what I'm talking today, what I'm presenting today, I'm presenting JS Chan, which you might think w what it is. It's just the, the port of uh, Libchan to Node and the browser. OK. I'm putting a star in the browser. I don't know. I don't know if you can call Internet Explorer a browser. <laughs> um, it, as it requires some really new tech, it won't work in Internet Explorer less than 11. OK. And which, I don't know, it's a big chunk of the market anyway. Uh, it depends on binary support on the browser and web sockets and all that kind of stuff. There is, at the moment, there is, well, you can build fallbacks, but still. We didn't do that. Um, each channel for us is just inherited from transform. You might know transform from node core. Uh, and you just manipulate channels via through. And you can, well, I really like the true true fashion. But anyway, you can use whatever you want. It's just streams. You can use on data if you like on data. Don't care. Uh, and you just build microservices composing this, in, this technology in that way. Um, we support SpeedyI, Speedy. OK, Speedy is well, the same stuff of Libchan. It's fully compatible with Libchan, so you can develop a service in Go and call it from uh, Node and vice versa. We also support a WebSocket thing, so we can call microservices right from the browser. I'm doing that right now in this presentation. We'll show you in, each, show you in a moment. However, this uh, protocol is not in the Libchan specification is just something we built. It's just plain message pack over WebSocket. It's way simple. Okay, this is the SpeedI specification. Maybe Fedor can say one or two things about it. Uh, and this is my specification for this protocol, which has much less stuff in there, but well, just works. Uh, anyway, this is just a little bit of code for Libchan, for, for JSChan. So we create a SpeedI, a SpeedI client, specify a port. 
create a bright channel and send a big chunk of stuff there, okay? What we are sending, we are just asking for a remote uh, command execution, all this kind of stuff, okay? Security guys don't listen. This is just a weird example. I'm just executing a code, a process remotely. You can do bad stuff with this code, don't run it in production, okay? Um, I'm sending a command uh, and the arguments, a uh, status channel for the getting the exit code and the standard error, standard output, the standard input. Know that I'm just passing through process standard in and all the stuff. It's just stock node stuff. I'm not piping, not doing anything. Uh, so this is the server counterpart of it. Uh, we have some events emitted. The server emit a session. The session emit a channel. And the channel, finally, we can do stuff with it. This is a little bit of boilerplate, of boilerplate code. It's in there. And it's a C next slide because it doesn't fit in one slide, the, 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 the actual thing. So th we are creating the, uh, the process, like childprocess.spawn with the commands, the arguments, and we are just piping, connecting our incoming streams to the, uh, to the actual stuff. Uh, know that this service is just doesn't, it does any requirements on it being local, remote, or anything. If that request contains just the stock process standard input, it will just work anyway. Okay, it's just the same piece, uh, piece of code that can run anywhere. So, uh, well, what can we send uh, on a channel? Well, we send anything that can serialize as JSON, uh, and we can send binary streams, readable, writable, and duplex. Uh, we can send other channels, as we have seen. Uh, well, obviously. There are streams, okay? It's back pressure. Uh, well, let me introduce a new stuff, new, another new thing. Uh, okay, on top of JS10, we built Graft. What is Graft? Well, this is just the actual thing, full stack through microservices. It's the microservice framework that sits on top of all this session and channel goodness. So uh, you create a new Graph instance, you require through two. I'm a fan of through two, but anyway. And you just pipe things. And this is just how you build your web service thing. You just pipe stuff. Well, how does this work? Let's build a simple other service. So this is another service. Uh, it's just, I don't know, a transform thing. We get, two, two, uh, we get a message in A and B, and we send the sum back to the, on the return channel, and we close the thing, right? We can call this stuff locally. It's really easy to call this thing locally. It just works. Uh, we, we, create, we have a new graphics instance, and we pipe it to the other service we require. We send our message A, B in the return channel, and then we print the result. Uh, how can we expose the service? Very easy. We require graph slash PDI, speedy. We open a server, and when it's ready, okay, we print some stuff, and then we pipe to the module.export of the other JS file. Okay, and yeah, so well, uh, where are where the, the channel and session ended up in this thing? They are just non enumerable properties on the message object. So when you require when you receive a request, you got this underscore channel underscore session thing where you can put it you know uh, authentication and all this kind of stuff. These two stuff are not uh, connected. Okay. We can also call the service remotely. We can actually, uh, it's actually the same example as before, it just works the same way, it is the same output. However, uh, instead of requiring the service locally, we just um, uh, pipe to a speedy so client and we just get back the result. We can even have some orchestration support, okay? Which is kind of the thing, okay? We are building a massive, uh, uh, microservice architecture, we might want some have orchestration, some conditions, I don't know. Route these messages to that service, route these other messages to this service, or route these messages to A and B, okay? And uh, we have this, we support that, okay? We can have this nice where uh, syntax where you can specify an object, uh, an object which is, is to be included in, in the request and what's matching goes to the second argument and if not matching, goes back in the pipeline, okay? Um, and this actually shows another nice thing 
that we are exposing a PD service, a service exposed through PD uh, through WebSocket. Okay? So, demo app. I am an Internet of Things guy. Okay? And I'm doing an example for the, from the Internet of Things. So, this guy, you see this? This is a TI, Texas Instruments sensor tag, 25 bucks. You can buy it, shipping included, shipping and battery included, so you can start playing with it. It has a very nice module, Node.js module, called sensor tag, which you can, con you can get data from this guy. It has two buttons, which I'm using to turn in the slides. And in fact, this thing is exposed as a microservice from this HTML5 presentation. So uh, actually, when I click, this is, the data gets back to, to my app. And I also have a temperature sensor and whatever, humidity, gyroscope, whatever. Uh, okay, so what's hooked up? This is the temperature sensor. We have, I don't know, ambient temperature of 25 degrees. Don't know. If you are into Fahrenheit, sorry guys, I don't get Fahrenheit. <laughs> uh, and we have also an object sensor. It's infrared, so if I close the thing, it should go up. Okay, and if I move, it should just go down. We also have a humidity sensor, which is, this is still live. Good to, good to be Ireland, I don't know. Uh, which also support like request response stuff, okay? So we can just get the last, late last temperature and we get the value, okay? And well, what's in the to-do list for, uh, for this thing? Okay, so lots of testing, new stuff. We pushed the first kind of uh, good enough release last week. So, yeah, um, very new stuff. Please get back with feedbacks and ideas and whatever, please. Um, one cool thing is service discovery, okay? You are just as a stream, so you can just, I don't know, pipe, stop the stream, pause the stream, reconfigure yourself when the, your service topology changes and uh, restart the stream, okay? It's, they're just streams. More transports, okay? Uh, I've just showed PD and WebSocket. It can run on a TCP socket. No issue. You can run, I don't know, when, wherever you have node streams, okay? So things almost everywhere right now. Okay, authentication is still an issue, but as you have the same framework, you can just have the same authentication for all your LPC style requests and also your, I don't know, live feeds and whatever. Okay, so we want to support HTTP REST because it's still uh, providing REST APIs makes a lot of sense. So HTTP and REST support needs to be done and so you can call from HTTP REST all your tons of uh, microservices and hopefully lots of feedback from you. Uh, okay, so I'm not alone in all this. I'm not the only mad guy. Um, there are some others and one is Adrian Rousseau, I don't know, I think, uh, hi Adrian, is over there. Long, lo long and long Skype calls on this issue and thank you so much for, for all your, for, for the work together. It's been really uh, a good, really nice journey and less things, it's, it's a longer one. Yeah. yeah, and also Peter Edgar, which is not here because he's working like crazy for the deployment workshop of tomorrow, please come. Um, and obviously me because otherwise, <laughs> what should we be doing up, up here? And uh, that's me, I am just well, mostly an open source developer, so whatever. Uh, I work for Nearform, yeah, t-shirt. And anyway, thank you guys.